Yo, what is good, everybody? It's your boy Golden, Golden Falls, Golden What If, whatever you want to call me, and I'm back with the finale of What If Deku was moves on Kibuzuji reincarnated. And I want to preference this, preference this right off the bat. This finale may be a little different than what me may, maybe most of you were expecting, but I will say if y'all blow this video up and I get a tons of responses that. Y'all want an alternate ending? Um, then I'll make sure to do that as soon as possible. But for now, I felt like this was the best way of going about it. No spoilers, obviously, but we're gonna get right into the finale of this what if. And I ain't gonna waste any more of your time. Let's get it. Shigaraki looks at him in shock. You want overhaul? Yes, is that a problem? Shigaraki then tells Muzan that getting Overhaul to agree to this would be practically impossible. I don't need to know if it's possible or not. Just get get him to meet with me. Shigaraki agrees and tells him that they will be meeting with him in the coming days. So feel free to, well, tag along. Muzan agrees and the next day he tags along, heading into a warehouse where they waited for overhaul to come they arrive and overhaul enters with his lackeys shigaraki talks to overhaul about what he wants and how he wants to work together but muzan sits in the back and just uses his phone overhaul overhaul looks at him asking why he isn't even listening because i don't care about any of this i'm not here i'm only here because i have an offer for you what do you have to offer me, kid? I want to offer you power. But in exchange, I want your help to gain perfection in this world. Overhaul looks at him confused. I can show you what I, I can do if you want. Muzan walks up to Overhaul and tells him to destroy his arm. What do you want about? Why would I do that? Just do it already. Overhaul does so, and Muzan's arm is completely destroyed. Oh my god! My arm! My arm! Just kidding. Muzan grows back his arm, grows back his arm, and in an instant, and Overhaul is baffled at what just happened. So Overhaul, what do you say? He responds to Muzan, asking him what kind of help will he need. He tells him that he intends to eliminate all heroes. Because with them still alive, it will make his goal of defeating death impossible. Muzan then begins to leave and tells Overholt that they will meet in a couple days. That he has some business to attend to in the meantime. Muzan leaves and heads back to the hideout. He walks up to the entrance but realizes that something is off. Someone has been here. He walks around the hideout and he looks around the building to find nobody. He walks in thinking maybe he was just being paranoid until this pink mist fills the room and he passes out. Muzan then wakes up in a cell in direct sunlight beating down on him and then passes out once again. Muzan then enters his mindscape and sees a little kid. Are you Azuku Midoriya kid? The, the little green haired boy turns around. The boy then begins to talk in an excited tone. Muzan, Muzan, I can't believe we have such a strong quirk. We can do so much with it. Muzan looks at the kid confused. But, but why do you do the things you do with it? Muzan tries to talk, but he can't. Muzan then turns to see a 15-year-old, Izuku Midoriya. Well, yeah, why Muzan? Why not use this power to be a hero? To save people, not hurt them. Muzan is unable to talk. You don't get it, kid. I am helping people. I'm turning this world into a better place. Do you really believe that? Truly. Or do you just say that to yourself to make yourself feel better? Muzan tries to kill Midoriya, but when he tries, Midoriya appears behind him. Now give me my body back. Midoriya then wakes up in a prison under sunlight that he can feel is restricting his powers. All Might is behind the glass and begins talking. Young Midoriya, uh, 
I hope you are in there because we need to talk. All oh my, it's me. I took my my body back over. Listen, you need to Young Midoriya. I have no idea. I have an idea to help you. No, All oh my, you need to kill me. If I die, then the other demons will follow suit. Please, All Might. Young Midoriya, none of us want to kill you. Please listen. Midoriya looks at All Might and begins listening. Look, Young Midoriya, my quirk can be transferred, and it may help you get rid of Muzan from your body. Midoriya then responds, It won't work, All Might. He's too powerful. We don't want you to die, Young Midoriya. Okay, but promise me that if this doesn't work, you heroes need to kill me. All Might then tells him that it will work, and he just knows it. All Might then enters the cell. Eat this! You want me to eat your hair? Yes, this is how my quirk is transferred. Midoriya then does so. Well, the effect should take place in a couple hours, so we need to keep you in the cell for a while. I know, All Might, and I think that is the best course of action as well. Midoriya is then kept in the cell for the next two hours, and lightning begins to course throughout his body, so much so that his body was overwhelmed by the sensation that he, sensation that he passed out. He wakes up in his mindscape to see eight people surrounding him. What's going on? A man with white hair approaches him, saying that Midoriya is now the ninth user of One For All, and that they will do everything in their power to help him become the hero he wanted to be. A loud roar type of scream can be heard from the distance, and Muzan reveals himself with his body contorted and showing various bones and spines as if ready to kill. Midoriya stares in shock, thinking that All Might's plan didn't work. The past users of One For All then charge at Muzan, and a large battle begins. Muzan begins to try and fight them all, all while trying to get to Midoriya, but is unable to do so. You won't escape me, kid. You'll always be over. You'll always be looking over your shoulder, thinking that I'm still there. Every time you look into the mirror, you'll think that I will be staring back at you. The fifth user of One for All then wraps Black Whip around the body of Muzan, slamming into him to the ground. Trust me, kid. He won't be a problem anymore. Just trust in us, your power, and the people around you. Midoriya then wakes up to see All Might and Az Aizawa staring at him. Problem child, are you okay? Sensei, I'm so sorry for what I did. Midoriya, don't apologize. It wasn't even you. Trust me, I've talked to your classmates, and yes, they were afraid of you. But everyone wants to see you back and safe. But Sensei, it was me. Everyone saw my physical appearance. How could I even be a hero anymore? Midoriya begins to cry, and All Might and Aizawa enter the cell, letting him free. Kid, I know you could be a hero. You're no monster. You're just a kid. Then they, ta they take Midoriya back to Yue, and various reporters are there waiting. We arrive at the scene of Yue High School, where it looks like All Might and Eraserhead are currently bringing in the villain knows at known as Muzan. Aizawa then covers the face of Midoriya using a scarf as they walk by. Reporters then begin to ask why they would allow a villain like him to walk free and even be still enrolled in UA. All Might then walks up to the camera. You all, this is a child. This is no villain. It was his quirk that made him do the things he did. He had no control over his own body. His quirk had a mind of its own, but we found a way to suppress this side of him. <laughs> So now, he is the, the young, inspiring kid once again. The reporters, in complete shock, begin asking more questions, saying that what he did still cannot be excused. I agree, citizens. And they, and they won't be. This child will go through various rehab to ensure that he will be truly reformed, and that his quirk's dark side is completely suppressed. Trust me, citizens, we are doing the absolute best for you and him as well. The reporters try to ask more questions, but All Might tells them that he's very busy and that he must go now. 
Midoriya is now in the teacher's lounge. Midoriya, I don't want to overwhelm you with what we have going on, but we have a trip basically to train the class in about a week or so. But don't worry about that. Um, you Don't worry about being ready to go to that. We also have final exams coming up. Aizawa then explains to Midoriya that he won't be able to participate in those, not because he doesn't want him to, but because they have something bigger for him to do. But for now, kid, I want you to go home. But what if... Kid, trust me, I'm sure Bakugo and his mother would love to see you right now. Midoriya then leaves and knocks on the door, and from inside you can hear, Katsuki, can you get that? The door then opens. Zuku, is that? Midoriya hugs him and begins to cry, saying that yes, it actually is him. They head into the house and talk about what happened and how it felt to be trapped away like how Midoriya was. Midoriya then explains that All Might found a way to suppress Muzan, and so far it has worked. Bakugo and his mom tell him how happy they are to have him back. Midoriya is then kept at UA under the supervision of some teachers that stayed there like President Mike at midnight, and he caught up on some work that he missed. Um, hey, Miss Midnight. P please, Midoriya, just call me Midnight. Oh, okay, um, you were the one who knocked me out, huh? You knew about that? I thought you would have no clue. Well, it's it's hard to explain, but I could kind of tell what was happening on the outside, like I was some passenger in a way. As he says this, the TV begins to turn onto breaking news. All Might is currently fighting all for one in their final showdown. We will try to get as close as possible to the fight without actually getting ourselves killed. Midoriya's eyes grow wide, and Midnight look, then looks at him. Midoriya, please do not do what I think you're going to do. Midoriya is then gone in an instant and begins running at insane speeds using 50% of one for all to make it to the area. When he arrives, he sees Bakugo fighting off the, the League of Villain members. Kachan! Midoriya jumps down, grabbing him and running so fast that he got him to another part of the city where it was safe in just a couple of seconds. How the hell did you do that, nerd? Long story, but I have to help All Might. Wait. I have to, Kachan. No, I, I wasn't going to stop you. Just don't die, you damn nerd. Midoriya smiles and then runs to the battlefield. Look who it is. The boy that Muzan tried to suppress for so long. You don't have the power to truly beat me, kid. Only Muzan did. And now he's gone, am I right? You don't truly know your powers. Young Midoriya, please leave. Midoriya then stands beside All Might. I won't let you die here, All Might. We can beat him together. All Might looks at him and nods. And they both charge in. And All Might and Midoriya begin to gain the upper hand, breaking All For One's mask. And eventually, they both charge at him. Double United States of Smash! They then knock out All For One, and All Might points to Midoriya, and then back at the camera, and says, It's your turn now. Midoriya then gets into my mi well minor trouble for what he did, but since All For One was such a dangerous threat to society, it was decided that he wouldn't really be reprimanded. But actually, for what he did, the the Hero Commission wanted to accelerate the process to get him his own hero, hero provisional hero license. But it was decided that a punishment needed to happen, so he was basically put under house arrest for about a week in the UA dorms. But after that, he would be granted his provisional hero license because at the end of the day, he did play a huge role in stopping the menace all for one. During that week, he was able to actually catch up with everyone, and even his class apologized for the way they acted toward him. And they will basically admitted that, yeah, they were scared, but now they understand it wasn't truly him. Mina then walks up, exclaiming that she was basically just never afraid. Out of nowhere, he hugs her and tells her that, and means so much to him that she never gave up on him and basically never gave up on him coming back. Wait, how did you know that? 
she then cuts herself off and realizes that Bakugo must have told him. Bakugo then enters saying that he deserved to know that I was that he basically wasn't the only one not giving up on him. She blushes and covers her face and Midoriya thanks her. Midoriya is told though that he won't be basically doing regular classes with his peers for a while to basically catch up on everything he missed, which was a good amount. But also that the help that he also needs to provide help and that kind of begins now. Aizawa takes Midoriya to an agency and they enter to see a man with glasses. I, I brought him Night Eye. I have things to do but Midoriya already agreed to help you, you in whatever way he can. They head into Night Eye's office and he shows Midoriya a picture of Overhaul. Midoriya, do you know who this is? Yeah, that's Overhaul. Naida then explains that they have been trying to track him down for a while now, but he needs his help to find him. Midoriya agrees and tells Naida that he can probably get into contact with Overhaul and set up a trap. They then plan their trap and a few days later, Overhaul and Midoriya meet up. Overhaul approaches Midoriya telling, that, telling him that he's surprised it took him so long to regain control over his body once again. Midoriya then tries his best to mimic Muzan by basically scoffing at the remark and asking if he considered his offer. Overhaul says he has and agrees to accept being a demon if that means becoming unstoppable to the point that he can truly make Hero Society what he sees fit. Midoriya then grabs his neck, but instead of turning, basically turning him into a demon, he slices both of his hands off. Pro heroes then come in and arrest Overhaul, and most pro heroes are in shock at what Midoriya just did, but Nidai then tells them that he had to take the course of action he felt would keep all of us safe. They then take Overhaul away and lock him up. Nidai thanks Midoriya for his help, but Midoriya tells them that they still that there are still people out there with powers of a demon, and he wants to go out and hunt them down. Night Eye agrees, and they build a task force to basically hunt down the demons left, including Stain. And after about a week, Midori and his task force were able to gather them up and put them away in jail. Night Eye then approaches Midoriya. Hey kid, you did some amazing work. You truly are a hero. Thanks, Night Eye. I'm, I'm glad I could help after all that stuff that I, I mean, Muzan did. Well, kid. With a heart like yours, you'll definitely be the n next number one hero. And that is the end of this what if. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe. Make sure to check down in the description below for my other links like my Discord, my GoFundMe, um, and my Twitch. Make sure to go check those out. <clears throat> and, and I really hope you guys enjoyed this ending. But even if you did or even if you didn't, either way, right? Um... Leave it down below if you guys want to see a different ending, more like of a villain ending. I know I kind of, this series was kind of built on on the, the lead up to him being a villain. And he was a villain for the whole, basically whole part, part two, he was a villain. But I decided to go this way. And if you were really paying attention in part one, I kind of already set this up. But I did see a comment saying that they, they, that. They wanted him to go down that whole villain route and I could totally do a different side story and like a different ending to that villain, more villainous aspect. But y'all have to blow up this video if y'all want to see that. Um, but yeah, but at the end of the day, if you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe. It would mean the world to me. I put so much time and effort into um, this what if and well, frankly, all my what ifs. I, um, I write, I literally just write them all out. So, but yeah, I hope... Um, I hope you all have an amazing day and later. Well,